So welcome to Challenge the Road. I've got a brilliant video for you today. We're gonna to talk about hydrogen. We're gonna talk about e-fuels. We're gonna see if EV actually is gonna work after it being put back to 2035. And I'm gonna tell you why it's been put back. Elon Musk of all his robots, Branson flying a plane on cooking oil. It's all going off, so you've got to watch this. So let's start at the beginning because I knew EVs will not work for everyone. And you know, you've seen some of the videos I've done lately. It's quite clear that obviously in heavy machinery, planes, um, you know, bigger machinery needs fuel of some type. I mean, it can't run out of charge like halfway or these type of things. And also if a plane is turning round quickly, how long would that take to charge? The weight of the battery. So where I've done videos saying EVs doomed, I think it is in a lot of ways, in a lot of areas, but there's a big game changer coming in. And, I, and I'll go through a little bit of that now, but obviously 2027, they're gonna bring in solid state battery technology. So going from lithium ion to solid state battery. That is a bit like, you know, your iPhone now against this old Motorola from the old days. You remember these, StarTax? Nice little phone. Used to have a double battery on here because they lasted about an hour. And that's what I feel is going to happen because with this huge change, and we bring up some articles, so Toyota have come out. I won't read it to you. I will actually attach it um, because they've come out and said, look, we're going to go solid state battery 2027, 2028. There's no word from Tesla yet on this, but what this battery does is quite incredible. One, it's a lot lighter, so 30% lighter maybe even more no fire risk that is huge isn't it that is massive for insurance these type of things toyota are claiming and i don't know if it's a claim because i think with toyota they're just you know one of the best manufacturers so but they're saying 1200 kilometers of range that is huge um and i don't know if that's why toyota haven't got many evs at the moment i don't know 80% charge in under 10 minutes. That is huge. So we're looking at, say, a 1,000 kilometer range in under 10 minutes. So is that going to make the cars that we see now a bit like a phone where they're going to be disposable? And where's all this lithium iron going to go? That's another conversation. But I'm concerned about it. I'm thinking we've been told by the government that by 2030 we're going to have to uh, go to a showroom and we can't buy a petrol or an internal combustion engine. Fine, okay. Now I can see why they've changed that now because they're realizing that the EVs we got now don't work for all lifestyles. I've done the videos on that, you've seen them. And you know, if you're using a three pin plug, it's a struggle. The Taycan for me on the seven kilowatt, yes, I've really enjoyed it. And the, the public network, I used that the other day, it's been good, but it won't work for everyone. It doesn't work for people in flats and all this. And, and anyone who says it's gonna be EV on everything, it just can't be. Now, I'm trying to look at them, well, what are the articles on this? And there's one here, it's a very, very good one. Now, Ronan Atkinson done an article and he said, I love electric vehicles and I was an early adopter, but increasingly I feel duped. And he is, you know, he said, sadly, keeping your old petrol car may be better than buying an EV. There are sound environmental reasons not to jump yet. Now, I'll put this article up, I'll, I'll put it on the actual headers um, and a link to it. You may have already seen it, it's been seen a lot of times, but. His first university degree was electrical and electronic engineering. So he obviously he knows his stuff, hugely well respected. Um, he's had his fair share of minis and that in Mr. Bean. But he's also had a McLaren F1, which is like one of the greatest ever cars. He's got a collection of cars. He's obviously maybe thinking in the same way I am. I mean, I started my collection in 2013 and I started off with one Lancia rally car and that's grown and grown. And my concern is more, one, what happens to all these cars we've got if fuel isn't there? 
Um, and fuel is so easy, it's peak technology. I, I was looking at some of the diesel filters and filters in petrol cars now. The emissions are actually quite, quite low from petrol cars and that. We are, we are peak combustion. We could have even probably got it even better. But what he goes on to say um, is that he, he's tried an electric car, um, but in real terms, it hasn't worked for him. And obviously the range is a problem. So he said, new so-called solid state batteries, which we just spoke about, are being developed that should charge quickly, be a third of the weight of the current ones, but they're years away from sale. So, you know, we're now producing all these overweight electric cars and, and they are heavy. When I look at Heva, the show, when the, the Teslas and that went, they left big holes in the grass, but this is August. So it's crazy, the weight, you know, a huge amount of weight. Also the roads, you're seeing so many potholes, aren't you? So if you imagine you've got like, um, you know, more trucks going down your road, you're getting all these bloody potholes everywhere and it's just the weight of the car. So lithium iron, his concerns are raised um, over their use in heavy trucks for long distance haulage because of weight. And, and we'll talk about alternatives to that in the next section, but it's a very, very good article. And he's right. He's absolutely right. You know, he said here, Formula One is going to use synthetic fuel from 2026. Um, and I know like the World Rally Championship are running on these type of fuels, you know, are feeling that the honeymoon with electric cars is coming to an end. And when I'm looking at electric cars for sale, there are loads. And I was right. You know, I was right on that. And going back to that first point, if you look at ourselves as car people or we've got classic cars, we look after them, we want to look after them. We want to keep them. And I'm seeing that if you're going to have like garden centres with these e-fuels, that's good enough because I'm not going to drive it all the time. I'm going to take it out now and then I can use an e-fuel and I can enjoy my car because, you know, I was looking at some of the stats on people using cars and we'll come back to that, but it is dropping off massively because, well, we get stuff delivered to home, don't we? We're lazy now, you know, we don't have to do anything. I could sit here now and probably just never go out, probably go on a virtual holiday, you know, but we don't want to be like that as people. We used to have like villages and that. I used to go to the bank. I don't even go to a bank. I haven't been to a bank for years. But you went to the bank and you went to the village and you supported local business and local shops. What's going to happen with EVs when you start talking about servicing? They said, oh, Richard, yeah, really good this EV. You've got no servicing. So where are the jobs going? Where's the next mechanic? Where's he thinking? Where's my next? What am I going to do? I'm going to go to university now and do a course on engineering car engines and stuff. Why? Won't be any. And, and as a nation, we've just got to be very, very careful. I, I strongly believe that we should be able to put a stop to stuff that, that takes away human jobs and say, look, enough's enough. We all want to have a role here. I mean, you just seen Elon Musk creating all these robots to do stuff, which is just freaking me out. I'm like, what the hell? And you, I'll bring up the video of them shooting his Tesla and how he's programmed and that. But that is just, it's just going too far. Let us just live a life, you know, and, and enjoy it. So anyway, that's the first part of this. I really like his article. I think he's absolutely right. Now, what I'm going to move on to is what machineries and that should be using. Right, so let's get into this bigger machinery. I've got diggers of my own, four diggers. There's dumper trucks. There's all this stuff that I don't believe can go electric, but we want to be as eco-friendly as, as we can. And at the moment, we've got things like electric chainsaws now, uh, electric strimmers, all this stuff. And actually, it's working incredibly well. And, and as, a, as a business in the fisheries, we're really happy. We've actually gone 100% solar and electric on our Remby Lake down near Erridge, which we're really proud of to get there. But bigger machinery, I said to the guys, I said, look, you've got a 20 ton machine, a five ton, a three ton. I can't see these running on electric. One, the weight of them would be massive, but two, the charging, because they can just get fuel readily, they're up and running. And these machines are running like constantly, eight hours a day. So the only way I see is hydrogen, I was tipped off about hydrogen a long time ago and I was trying to buy hydrogen shares, but I just couldn't find anywhere to buy them. But I just thought hydrogen, zero emission. The problem you have is transporting it because it's highly flammable. 
Um, I assume it's obviously difficult. It's like a pellet. I'm not an expert on it. I'm sure someone on here is, but... I'm often asked, why hydrogen? Where does the power come from? It comes from that. That is a glass of water, H2O. is split the H2 from O, and it's possible to do it in scale and around the world. This is power. The power to move the earth. The power to change the world. This is JCB's hydrogen combustion engine at work. JCB have come out with these hydrogen machines. They're going to be launching. I do think that's the way forward. And I think that the government should be subsidising these, should be helping JCB. And, and we should be getting this, you know, working in a, in a shorter time frame by them having more help. There's some good videos on that. Harry's Garage, I'll try and put a link to that. He's done a great video on the JCB. So hydrogen, to me, is the way forward. They're planes. You've just seen Richard Branson do a flight on, I think it was cooking oil or vegetable oil. So daughter standing over there. I remember her sitting on my lap um, 40 years ago when we, when we flew the inaugural um, flight. We were laughing our heads off at some, something, <laughs> something, we'd, something we'd done with the pilots. Um, that was a magical day, although terrifying, and that nobody thought we would, we would last the year. And, and we very nearly didn't last the year. Um, definitely nobody thought we'd, la we'd, la we'd last 40 years. This is an important first step. We've set out, we'll be setting out next year our legal mandate to have 10% of sustainable aviation fuel by 2030. We've got money going into working with our partners to scale up five plants to get under construction in 2025. So I think we're well on track, but this is an important first step. Really excited, it sends a very powerful message about innovation in British aviation. And any uh, hint of greenwashing about what we're seeing today? No, not at all. Look, sustainable aviation fuel is 100% on this flight. The first commercial transatlantic flight reduces aviation emissions by carbon emissions by 70%. So it's really he's done that. Um, I think it was from London to New York. It was in the press. I don't know if you've seen it. I'll try and bring up some stuff on that. So bigger stuff. So that to me, EVs out the way there. And this is what I mean by EV is going to have. A, a, you know, a part to play, but what part and where. So hydrogen for that. The next bit I've got for you is motorsport, Goodwood, historic racing, historic racing cars, classic cars, and like cars and coffee events. Now, <clears throat> I really, really enjoy the cars and coffee events. I enjoy our events. And we need to keep the, these older cars going 100%. So the e-fuel stuff that rally cars are using now, <clears throat> and you've got Goodwood uh, Revival, was all 100% e-fuel, brilliant. That's great. And, and to tell the truth, if I've got an older car, I'm in for money anyway. I know I'm going to spend money and I'm never probably going to get back. I'm going to probably, you know, get the best polish. I'm going to get it clean. I'm going to do the underneath because that's my hobby. That's what I enjoy. You know, I... I I work and earn money to enjoy it. I don't work here to watch it pile up and have a look at it and go, that's a nice bit of money. No, I want to see it in a car. So I think that will work. I think that you will be able to go to a garden centre or even have e-fuel here. I'm looking at a new unit for all the cars and I'm just going to have e-fuels there. I'm just going to run them. Okay, yeah, costs more, fine. But I will feel better about it. So if I'm running a McLaren P1 on e-fuel, I'm running it on e-fuel. And, he, you know, if you look at just, you know, back when I didn't have, you know, what I have now, I'd love to run my Lancia Delta, my little Evo 1 on e-fuel and run it round and go through the village knowing there's no pollution, you know. So I think that's going to work. But again, I'm now taking out EV. So we've got to come back to EV because I said, can it survive? Well, I think it can but the solid state battery will make a big difference. But I said all along, I still think hybrid, because if you imagine if you can have like an e-fuel and the battery back up, you're in perfect order. There's nothing wrong. And I, I was thinking about the Taycan and I thought, if you said to me now, 
which is let's go to Devon, which we love to do as a family. We've always gone down to the farm, enjoyed that. I wouldn't want to go in an EV, you know, not at the moment. Now, that's not to say they're going to sort out the charging network and batteries are obviously going to get better. But I wouldn't want to. Um, that's how I feel about it. So I think it's just more like just a, a discussion because when I put up about EV being doomed and things, um, you know, I had a lot of debate from EV people. Richard, you're wrong. Da, 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 da. I'm not wrong. I'm just telling you that it's a lifestyle vehicle. If you're, you know, collecting your pension and you've got time to have an EV and you've got it all set up here, you're fine. And if you've got a good setup, you're fine. But at the moment, I've still got the EV and I've still got the van. If you're, you know, like me, picking up the kids from school or you're, you know, taking the kids to school and that, it's really, you, you want to know it's going to be there. And, and I know there's not enough power. So if they're planning blackouts and we all go to EVs and the car doesn't charge, you can't go in the morning, oh, I can't take Tommy to school because I haven't got any power. Oh, you want to go to hockey? Oh, no, I can't. Yeah, I can't get there. I've only got enough to get that's that's not going to work and that and that is the whole problem of this we're creating all this lithium iron we're creating the ne massive need for power without putting in enough solar infrastructure i mean I, I was on the parish council for a bit and they done a new housing estate and i wasn't on there when they done it but there's no solar there's no it's just a joke how do we let this even happen that's why i went on there I thought, come on, let's get a debate on it. Let's get going. Now, why did we, we've let someone have like 40 houses that they've made money on. The sewage system doesn't work. There's no solar facilities. Give them all electric charges, great. All oh, seven kilowatt, great, yeah, off the grid. Make it even worse for us. It's just crazy. And, and I hate things like that. I get really annoyed by it. And I think you guys probably do too. So <clears throat> going back to the original point, it's gone back to 20. 35 i think because solid state batteries will be readily available by then and it is a game changer can evs survive yes in certain capacities in certain areas i think they're very good um, i think if you can have your lifestyle around that and you've got short journeys and we said like the journeys are getting shorter and shorter because we order from amazon we order our food can just arrive um so, so then, you know, I think that I was looking at some figures and it was really low now, but I, I'll bring them up. So, yeah, so they're just my feelings on it. I don't, I don't know what you think. I don't know if that helps you. Um, I'm not trying to put you off buying an EV in any way. This isn't buying advice. It's just, you know, and I've just bought a Taycan, but I did get 40,000 off it. And I'm sure there is a middle ground, but we have got to think about how do we recycle this I mean, like with a phone you, you can sort of recycle the phone but I think there needs to be a facility to recycle cars because if you've got a hundred mile range car and you're moving to a thousand mile range car in three or four years obviously your old one is, is pretty much redundant why would you want that you probably wouldn't so I hope you enjoy these videos and I hope this helps there'll be more coming soon please like share subscribe really helps us grow as a channel and I'll see you again soon